What's up, guys? Bang, bang. Bitcoin had a massive week this week. And so, of course, one of the beauties of the market is that we can go right to the on-chain data and the macro data and see exactly what's happening in the Bitcoin network. Here's a summary of the past week. If we start out, we can see right here some of the key market dynamics that Bitcoin's trading just under $39,000, drastically outperforming a number of different assets. If we then go take a look at the Bitcoin network stats themselves, the Bitcoin market cap sitting just about $750 billion or so. Of course, we're still at a 1.77% inflation rate, which is below the Fed's target of 2%. Over 90% of the Bitcoin supply has now been issued out into the market into that circulating supply. The real exchange volume at 2. $5 billion or so, over a million active addresses, and miners were paid $35.7 million in the last 24 hours to secure the decentralized network of Bitcoin. The GBTC premium is now a discount at a negative 25.34%, and Bitcoin is still down 43% from its all-time high. If we go and we take a look, Bitcoin versus gold versus the S&P 500, we see that Bitcoin over the last year is down 28%, while gold's up 7 and the S&P 500 is up 2%. But if you go to any other time period, Bitcoin is absolutely destroying gold in the S&P, up 374% over the last two years and up 775,000% over the last decade. Then if we take a look at Bitcoin's closing price, Bitcoin sitting right about $39,000 means that Bitcoin has only ever been above this price point for about three 349 days. That means for over 92% of Bitcoin's life, Bitcoin has been lower than the current price point. So if you bought Bitcoin at that point and you held till today, you would be in profit. If we then go ahead and take a look at the compound annual growth rate of Bitcoin over the last decade, it sits at 145% or so, destroying the S&P 500, NASDAQ, gold, and TLT. And then of course, that five-year sharp ratio at 1.51, coming in much, much more attractive than any other asset. Then let's switch gears and go to Willy Wu. Willy tweeting out that the orange coin seems a bit undervalued here. Not a bad time for investors to wait for the law of mean reversion to play out. He's looking at that highly liquid supply shock oscillator, going ahead and trying to tell us exactly how much Bitcoin is worth compared to the price at which it's trading. Then if we take a look and we go and run over to Will Clemente, the wizard himself, taking a look on chain at exactly what's going on in the brand new Blockware newsletter that came out this week. First, he starts with the price and he drew out these lines showing that Bitcoin just trading in a range. Then if we go ahead and we take a look at the on-chain price levels, what we can see is that in blue here, the short-term holder cost basis, and then in orange, a ratio of realized price liveliness called a hodler implied price. This is a bullish scenario based on the chart, according to Will. And ultimately, you'd want to see a push above the short-term holder cost basis that they've been talking about. The bearish case would be that we actually go down and cross over the short-term cost basis before the hodler implied. That would be a sign of capitulation. If we then go ahead and take a look at various price levels, we can see here at the realized price distribution. This visualizes the amount of Bitcoin that was last moved at each denominated price level. About 14% of Bitcoin's money supply last moved between $38,000 and $41,000, showing that that is the highest distribution on this graphic. Then let's go move and take a look at the funding rate, which remains kind of a mixed signal. It's an indication of a lack of strong opinion in either direction from the perpetuals market, as well as an increasing market efficiency. That is the view of the Blockware folks. Then let's go take a look at the geographic premiums and Will and the Blockware team breaking down this idea that Asian trading hours have been trading Bitcoin at a premium for the first time since January. That's been a fairly strong signal of local recoveries aside from a slight premium in late November. And then ultimately the previous premium regimes, the post COVID crash, the dip that bought to $47,000 in April of 2021, a massive dip buying in the summer of 2021. And then of course the 40 K in September 21 and then right in January. So to see the Asian trading hours, trading Bitcoin at a premium, pretty incredible. Then let's jump to the supply not moved in at least a year. We continue to see an amount over 64%, sitting around 64.5%, which is an all-time high. Bitcoiners aren't selling. And over 64% of Bitcoin has not moved in at least a year. Then let's jump and take a look at the Bitcoin whale holdings. And you can see that whales are accumulating aggressively. This is such an important metric that Will literally texted it to me this week and said, wow. As we see the entities with over 1,000 Bitcoin filtering out all the exchanges and GBTC, etc., 
Those whales continue to add to their holdings. This is the first time since January that we've seen this occur. Now, of course, the Bitcoin market. It's important to pay attention to the on-chain metrics. On-chain is not some magical indicator. It doesn't tell us the future. But what it does do is it opens up in a transparent way exactly what's already happening on-chain. This data is available in the Bitcoin market. It's like getting an earnings report every single day on the Bitcoin network. The Wall Street investors are going to open their eyes and start to realize that on-chain metrics are incredibly important. And as they begin to realize they have more information and more transparency in this industry, you're going to see more and more investors, more and more traders start to come into the market. Bitcoin is holding strong, especially in light of the meltdown in tech stocks and other industries. All those other assets, they're down 50, 60, 70 percent. Bitcoin down about 40% or so. And so even though it's down in price, it's holding up better than lots of other risk assets. It's going to be interesting to see where Bitcoin goes from here. There's arguments that it could be a bearish outlook. And there's arguments that it could be a bullish outlook. My favorite metric, though, is that 64.5% of Bitcoin hasn't moved in a year. This market's illiquid. And it's going to take a catalyst of demand to drive the price higher. Where that comes from, I don't know. And neither does most people. But when it comes... As we've seen many, many times before, Bitcoin moves fast once it gets going. That's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed these updates. I'll be back next week with Will on the show. I hope that you guys are enjoying these and I'll talk to you next weekend. Hey you, did you like this video? Great, we make five of them a day and post them here on this channel. Make sure you subscribe, like the video and see you next time.